The Green Room at Lift Vancouver is brought to you by Cloud9 Cannabis Coaching. If you have suffered from anxiety, chronic pain, or depression, like I have, you know full well how debilitating it can be. Brady Sparrow, founder of Cloud9 Coaching, specializes in microdosing cannabis to help her clients lead more balanced lives. Whether you've been using cannabis your entire adult life or just now learning about this incredible plant, Brady's simple microdosing guide will help you find the perfect balance in just one month. Brady is about to host her first 30-day challenge called Find Your Cloud9 in 30 Dope Days. I'm doing it and you should too. So why not go over to cloud9coaching.com and join us. Be sure to use coupon code Jackie, J-A-C-Q-U-I, for a special green room discount. What's going on, everybody? It's Les from Cannabis Wiki. I am here with Gerald Major, president of CFAM. Yes. The lovely Jackie. <laughs> he looks right in my face. Like, who the hell do I have next to The lovely now? Jackie Child. My, I'm still lovely. Thanks, my Lester. My fantastic co-host and our special guest, Nikki Jackson. What's Back. back to the green room. Back to the green room. It was so nice the first this time. This time live. <laughs> this time live, yeah. So good to be here with you guys in person. Um, thank you for having me back, of course. Thanks for coming. Thanks for joining well, us. Well, we weren't coming to BC and not seeing you. Oh, I'm so glad that you did. It's I'm, I came over from the island, and I'm glad. It's sad that you guys couldn't come over there, but we'll, we'll have to reschedule that. For course. sure. Yeah. So tell us what's exciting in Vancouver right now. What's uh, going on? In Vancouver? We're More exciting BC, in Victoria. Three. What's yeah, happening? Yeah. Um, I don't even know where I am. <laughs> That's okay. You're, you're, you're here with me, so it's okay. Yeah. Um, so Good. in the uh, Victoria region, I work for the Victoria Cannabis Buyers Club, and we uh, yesterday had the Victoria City Council and our mayor. Um, basically, my boss has asked them for supporting us in getting an exemption from our government. So we found the only exemption in the Cannabis Act. It's kind of a bullshit exemption, but... Um, Basically, that sounds like a good <laughs> exemption. It, it is, because we figured it out. So the lieutenant governor oh, can shit. grant us an exemption. It's the only thing that can grant us an exemption. It's a temporary exemption. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's up to two to three years. I don't know the exact actual, or exact, exact um, just make it up words. I know, right? I do okay. all the time. Oh, okay. That's a great word. Exact, exact temporary, exactual. but um, it's an exemption. So basically the community safety unit wouldn't be able to come back in and take the medicine like they did on November 14th, um, which was traumatizing to the club. This they took huge. a massive amount of cannabis this from us and our patients so uh, basically the our, my boss went to the council and mayor and asked them to help us get the exemption because we need the municipal support before we can get the BC cabinet support before we can get the lieutenant governor to even consider this right right because the lieutenant governor is a figurehead so they can only grant it by request of the BC council so um, our municipal government is supporting us so this is the first time this has ever happened in Canada this is making history wow. this is really big this is really big like this is this is the second time our well, not the second time. We've made a lot of history, but this is like a huge thing. Um, so basically, we've got a lot of work to do. We're still we're coming to Vancouver next weekend and occupying Hetty Fry's office, a little liberal MP. So we're still doing lots of protesting. We've got a lot of work to do because we still need the next level of government to talk to us, and then the next level of government to change their laws so we can even comply with the legislation. Because we do want to be legal, but we don't want to be legal how they have legalization right, done. Right. Because like for example, my coworker that's here with me today has already eaten 600 milligrams. I myself, yeah. I myself just ate so 200. I myself just ate 200 just now, and I ate 150. High performers. That. But so, um, and I just had a whole bunch of tinctures. So like Wicked. you name it, like I'm just like downing cannabis. And if I were to do that on a legal market, like I brought a chocolate bar from my work that we eat. So <laughs> this is 750 milligrams right. um, made locally on the island. Um, oh. And me and my coworker can munch on these like all day, every day. Uh, my coworker has been comparing um, the legal cannabis that. Uh, is here and uh, if we were to eat the same amount of legal cannabis a it would be five hundred dollars B we'd have to consume twelve thousand to fourteen thousand calories C that's wow. a pound of chocolate one pound of compounding chocolate. disease with compounding bad food disease but also 600 to 750 grams of sugar so wow. us with our Crohn's disease we would die yeah. you know? like literally like not be able to function so we could eat this chocolate you can eat this chocolate um and have the most amazing effects from it and have no no sugar crash or no um no downside from it right so the legal market just wouldn't be available to to patients like myself to patients like like my co-worker to the 7800 members that we have at our club um so the the government 7800 now so it's been over 800 members that have joined since i started working there in a year so that that shows how much access there isn't for everyone else Mm. um 
it's incredible. It also like, shows the good work you're doing totally. and all the speaking out you're doing and using social media, what, yeah. you know, using it for good. Yeah, we've organized six protests. Like I myself was a big hand in organizing those the protests and the rallies that we've been doing. So it's been, it's been crazy. Like it feels like a weight's off my shoulder with the first round, but we've still got so much. Like I'm coming back next weekend. We've got one planned in Nanaimo the following weekend. We've got one planned back at the Ministry of Health at the end of the month. But we made it a block party. It was super fun. We had like pizza. We ordered pizza. We had Empire Donuts. Uh, my mom made seven layer dip. Shout out to mom. Shout out yeah. to mom. Yeah. Shout out to mom. Always, so always, man. Mom's yeah. always yeah. around. She's, she actually couldn't be with us because she's helping out at the club today. My mom's now on the board of directors. Oh, oh nice. Yes. Um, so yeah, Savvy Stone family. Is, is you go, mom. Awesome. The Savvy Stone family. Yeah. Uh, how it's many? A thing. It's a thing. How so. many layers of cannabis are in the seven layer dip? <laughs> See, um, the thing is, we can so we as a medical club, we don't hand out I'm... cannabis to the streets, right? So we actually don't hand out any um, edibles at our rallies. So at home, so that's very, very medicated, all seven. Um, but yeah. on the streets, not. So <laughs> short answer, all seven. Well, unless you're my friend. <laughs> Man. Well, you can have mine. We'll have a medicated dinner one time. I, I have a personal <laughs> connection to Crohn's disease. Um, I have ankylosing spondylitis in the spondyloarthritis yeah. family, and Crohn's disease is very much linked. Uh, it's called enteropathic right. arthritis yeah. is when you have both. Yeah. Um, I don't have the Crohn's. I sit in uh, hospital rooms with people that have Crohn's every month, Crohn's yeah. and colitis. Uh, so I know what you get, go through. This is not a joke, right? No. So why is it that we start doing research trials on um, Dravet syndrome that you can physically see? Yeah. And then when you start to get into some of the invisible illnesses uh, from autoimmune disease like arthritis, Crohn's and colitis, uh, mental health, right? The list goes on. Now, why is it that we can't throw big volumes at that? It, we can and we should, but we can't because I of... can tell you why, because when you have any of those issues, it's very hard to talk about it. Right. Like I'm sure Jackie yeah. can attest to that. Like, especially when my stomach was flaring. Like I remember the last time I went to the hospital, I don't go to the hospital anymore. Fun fact, um, because either. the last time I went there, I spent six hours in the waiting room um, and I was in a ball. I was like yeah. in the fetal position. I didn't yell. I didn't scream. I just sat there because that's all you have the energy to do. I hadn't found cannabis at that point in the extent that I did. I was a recreational user at that point. I wasn't a medical consumer at that point. So um, the edibles weren't in my realm and I wasn't getting the relief that I really needed from the cannabis at that point. Um, but six hours in the waiting room, once I got into the emergency room, only because my mom bitched. Um, I was in there for another four hours before my mom had to bitch again to the doctor and ask where the doctor was to come and see me. Um, the doctors weren't around and when they came there, I had a colonoscopy scheduled the next week. Oh. So he's like, what, so like, what are you doing? So fun. Oh. Yeah. I was like, what are you doing? I had told him that. He basically told me, well, there's nothing I can do for you now. Um, you might as well just go back to your house and relax at your house because you're just laying in a hospital bed and there's nothing I can do for you. And I was like, but you're a doctor. Like yeah. everyone goes to the hospital to, to feel safe. And I, I personally haven't felt that safe in the last few visits. Like, yeah. Don't get me wrong. I respect the medical industry. I respect the place that they have. But for people like us, we don't have a place in where they are is what I feel. Right. Um, right. So yeah, it's an interesting an interesting thing with Crohn's yeah. disease. Where, it's hard to talk about. Where can all of our viewers find you or listeners find you? How can they reach you? I mean, you're a wealth of knowledge. You've got lots of stuff going on. A Super lot. approachable and exciting. I mean, yeah. we need some more sparkly, <laughs> um, sweet faces. That, I mean, you're doing some real stuff. Yeah. So where it's can really we cool find you? It. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Savvy Stone Girl. Um, but I also work at the Victoria Cannabis Buyers Club. So if anyone uh, wants to reach out on, I do all the club social media too. So any of those forms, it'll be me answering, the, whether it's Instagram or Facebook. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Instagram is the, the easiest way to get a hold of me at this point. I haven't had a lot of time to revamp everything else with how much we're doing with the club. Well, Good. Well, we want to we want to definitely uh, touch back, back in with again. you yeah, and find out what time. is going Please. on with the municipalities Please. and how how it's working out. Yeah. So we're, we'll have um, probably more by the end of the month, um, but we'll obviously connect either way. We'll chat if you guys soon. can come out, that'd be awesome. Excellent. Thanks yeah. for joining us on so, the green room. Me. You got you got one more. One more. I'll be in. Uh, Victoria uh, in the end of February Beautiful. so where do we find people um, right down on Johnson Street yeah. so it's a, I, it's I work, like literally the heart of Victoria I work All right. in I'll so. see you then yeah. okay yeah. Thank, Guys. You. thank you we'll see you soon thanks for joining us in the green room